Hi guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sound, back with another one of our video calls. And this week's guest is the main frontman, John O'Callaghan. We chat through the brand new single, Sticky, what to expect from their forthcoming new album, XOXO, Love and Anxiety in Real Time, their recent live stream show, loads, loads more. Hope you enjoy this one. Here he is in his own words, Mr. John O'Callaghan. Last time we kind of chatted, you were saying about how a lot of the music you were writing, despite all the challenges of the last 12 months, was very, very uplifting and on the more poppier side of what you do clearly sticky musically definitely definitely fits that kind of mold of your sound how is that reflective of what's to come does it fit in that same kind of poppy vein i think a majority of the record does but i think when you make a record or at least when we approach a record and when i approach writing the songs it's not like you it's not like i have like a blueprint right i'm not like following like some formula but there is something to be said for like, you know, Sticky does this thing. It does this poppy dance thing. And I feel like it fills that void, if that makes sense. So I didn't want 10 or 11 songs in a row to just feel like that, you know, especially when I'm going to create a full body of work and not just one song over and over and over. Um, so I think sonically it feels similar in this vein but it, it's not everything doesn't have tempo everything doesn't have groove like this um and i think now that uh, we we announced the record title i think the songs definitely to me at least feel like the record the 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 it feels aptly titled to me it feels like you get these moments of brilliance of like love and that that emotion and and sort of you know how incredibly warm the feeling is but also scary it can be and then the anxiety part is is pretty self-explanatory but um i'd like to think that there's flashes of of both ends of the spectrum and and hopefully it's a well-balanced record for people i know um for me, it feels like the perfect amount of nostalgic domain, um, things that I really love about our band, and then um, a, a good balance of hopefully what people have been attracted to over the last seven albums, which is what I think is just um, not, I guess, leaving people guessing and keeping them guessing and, and not delivering the same product over and over and over and over again. So I, I think it's a healthy balance. Well, you know, we have a few months to, to see how people feel and then, and then the thing comes out. So I'm just excited that we're back with new music. Oh, I can imagine, man. It must have been amazing to finally be able to get something out there, especially when you've, you know, you've had this almost ready to go before everything changed in the world. So it's, yeah, it's got to be so, so exciting to put it out there. Uh, one note I've got to say on on that single, which I really enjoyed, by the way, but uh, the lyric reference, I have to get your take on. A little shout out to Mr. Neil Diamond in there, which is always very yeah. fun. <laughs> Where did that yeah. lyric reference come from, man? Um, what's funny is uh, I was I was thinking of songs that, that, like just kind of repeat lines and i i vividly remember going to a boston red sox game and for whatever reason it became a staple at their games and i just thought that that was like the one quintessential thing that popped into my head that was like neil diamond that 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 line so good so good so good so i mean i actually told um I had to tell Garrett, our bass player, what the actual lyric was just like a week ago before the song came out. Cause he's like, what do you say right there? It's like, <laughs> yeah, there it filling is. Him in, filling him in on the work of Mr. Exactly. Neil Diamond. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Love that little reference. Uh, the music video came to go with it. Nice and colorful, nice and vivid, really suits the song. I guess uh, still filming in a pandemic and everything, but it's gotta be nice to be able to get in there and actually finally be making music videos again. You know, I know people have really struggled over the last year and or had to adapt at least and do a lot of at home stuff and in different way. It's got to be great to be able to get in there and, uh, and make something as big as that again. No, for sure. It was, it was a trip because we hadn't put any music videos out for you are okay. 
and we kind of forgot how the whole process works. And then here we were like meeting this brand new way of doing it, you know, where you get in, everything's, you know, I mean, it's all very protocol and we shot for probably 10 hours, but we did not like stop. We got everything, you know, we shot, we overshot, we overshot so that, you know, we weren't going to get a second chance at it. So uh, Angela, the director needed an over abundance of, of materials so that we wouldn't have to go back to California. So it was, um, it was just cool to like, we hadn't worked with, um, we've worked with, uh, Daniel Gomez, who's, uh, done music videos for us in the past. Um, we've only worked with like a handful of people. So to work with Angela was really, it was really rad because she's more, I think in the like commercial world, as far as, I, I don't know how many music videos she's done, but I think this is one of her first. So it was really cool to get that side of production. I'd never seen that side of production. So, um, yeah, we we're really stoked, stoked with how it, how it all kind of came together. Oh, it came out very, very cool. And I've got a very, very silly question, but it's one I have to put to you. How long did it take you to get that honey out of your hair, man? That looked Dude, amazing. it sucked. It oh, sucked. It, it was the... You know, in my head, I was like, oh, we're going to use like some movie magic stuff. Like, <laughs> right. You know, you're like, surely there's got to be some substitute for real honey, you know. And she waited. She waited to even mention that we were doing real honey. And she waited to even say that we were doing it until the very end of the shoot. So you're already tired. You're already like kind of grumpy. You haven't really eaten you're like running on no sleep. And then she's like, all right, you guys ready for the final scene? And it was like, what do you mean? And, you know, we only had like a, a change of clothes, if that. And so, yeah, then we got it all dumped on. But I will say huge shout out to her because her house was like a mile and a half away. And she had like one of those uh, button to unlock your door things on your app on your phone and she's like all right you guys can get into a car and then go and I'll unlock the door while we wrap up and you guys can use my shower so it was a it, you know I couldn't be mad at her That's I love the way it looked but it sucked for sure especially if you have like arm hair like this oh god i hadn't even thought yeah. of that of course leg, it's gonna get stuck everywhere leg hair oh dude it was very unpleasant but nightmare oh well hey the looks things good. we do <laughs> <laughs> the sacrifices for art this is what we like to see um let's talk a little bit i mean it's one of my favorite questions i ask everybody about but i'm always fascinated by album titles particularly when they come in the form like this of big big statements it's something you guys have done a lot i think you are okay was definitely that big statement to sum up an era as well uh with this one yeah xoxo from love and anxiety in real time tell me about where that came from and i guess why it sums up this record for you guys as a whole I think for me, it, it had been a, a title, at least like the iteration of it was, there were a few different forms. So I always kind of keep like lists of both song titles and album titles on my phone. And just over the course of writing it and recording it and writing the songs and then kind of dealing with what I was going through in my life personally, um, it just, I kept circling back to it. So I think, to be honest, this is like, you know, I think this is a, a the, the 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 most um, aptly titled record like that correlates with my life in the past year and a half, and it it hopefully will start to broaden and and like be be more relatable. But right now, for me, it's just it's what I've been going through, you know, going through the anxiety of just being a human being and then managing, you know, the, the sort of the waves of, of love and anxiety at the same time in my life. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, uh, I think, I, I don't know if this is like, I think this is the most personal um, record title other than you are okay. Because that was like, we talked, you know, years ago, that was sort of, my mantra for when the anxiety would kick. Um, 
And this one is just more about uh, what I've been going through in the past year and a half. So it's interesting you say that, you know, it's, it's such a personal record for yourself because even those basic themes of love and anxiety, and I just know this from the little bits that I've heard of the record already, um, it could almost sum up the mood of the planet over the last year, like finding sure. moments of love amongst the obviously raging anxiety that so many of us have felt over these last 12 months. But I like the fact that this can kind of sum up that mood, but without being a for want of a better phrase, a pandemic record. Do you know what I mean? It's not yeah, songs yeah. written about this situation, but amazing how relatable even the personal things can be to, to a wider audience, I guess. Sure, absolutely. And I think that, that, that you know, it, it's not like we waited um, because of the pandemic or anything like that. It was, it was more so we wanted to get it right because we had the time. And we, we don't want it to feel like a record that was made in this really unique, terrible time. We want it to still feel like an important moment in our band's career and an important era for, for our band's, you know, whatever's to come. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely tough to navigate, but like you're saying, you know, we're all figuring it out and, and we've, we've only had a year and some change to do so. So it's, a uh, but there are, you know, the, the, the cool thing to me, and this is just tangent side note, but um, there are like signs of, you know, light coming there. There's like moments where you're like, oh, that's, you know, they're, they're letting people back into sporting events and they're, you know, doing this and doing that and letting people into movie theaters here in the, in the U S. So it's like, there, there seems to be light at the end of the tunnel for sure. Keeping our fingers crossed, man, and especially for live music, you know, we really want to see you guys be able to get up there and play these new songs, especially over here in the UK. And case in point, let's mention that live stream show you guys just did. Congratulations on that. Um, again, I think I might mention this to you before, but I just love how everyone's live streams are so radically different. Like throughout this year, throughout this time, no band has approached it in the same way. It's been so, so cool to see that. Uh, what was your approach this time round, I guess? And uh, and what were the challenges again of, of presenting this new era, I guess, from afar? Yeah, I mean, we definitely didn't want it to look like anything that we did in 2020. Um, and, and certainly, like you're saying, we, we try to set ourselves apart every time from, from even ourselves, you know? Um, so Pat actually initially had the idea in his, it, it's just, it's, it's really, I think a testament to why we're still a band because, you know, Pat will start with this idea and it'll, it'll be some grandiose, crazy, no way that could ever happen idea. And then, after we sort of bounce it off all of the, you know, one another and then bounce it off our manager, Tim, it becomes something else, but now it's, you know, now it's a collective uh, conscientious, like, all right, here, we're going to collectively work on this idea. So um, there's this, uh, a, a theater actually in the round in Phoenix that we, I had seen a show. I've actually seen a UFC fight way back in the day. And then, a show um, which was some 41 no use for a name uh, the starting line so Hell of a if you look if, if you if you type that in google you'll know how old i am but um it was it, it's a really wild venue and and in the round it, i think it holds like 2500 people or something like that and it's really historic for for phoenix um celebrity theater i think it used to be called the phoenix star or something like that but like uh the guy that was the that was helping us said that david bowie played there bruce springsteen played there so really famous but we wanted this the stream itself to feel different um hence the the round and it it turned out i mean i was blown away as to as to how it all came together and uh, Lupe Bustos, who does a bunch of photo and is now doing a lot more video for us. Um, he was sort of the, the director of the whole thing. And, and we couldn't have been more pleased with how it came together. And, and yeah, it's just a, a rad like introduction. You know, it, it's like we, we titled it XOXO from the main, but we only played one new song. 
and it's like you know but this is like the new era sorry my dog's dreaming right here um <laughs> we'll always allow that oh yeah. gorgeous absolutely blessed oh man. but it's uh it, it's yeah it, it was just a, a really rad thing that now we'll have to figure out how to top and and figure out oh. how to make look look cooler the next time so um yeah Really, yeah, really pumped. exciting, man. It was exciting, man. And one uh, real highlight, bringing Sydney out for that duet on, uh, on Interior. Yeah, yeah. Such a lovely, lovely moment. Um, how did that one come about? You know, do you approach it directly, I take it? How did it all kind of come together? So Pat um, had come in contact with her, and she, she's a uh, local artist, um, well, local to Phoenix. Um, she just put out a record, too, which everybody should go check out. Um, so he was like, you know, we, we had ideas like maybe we can do because we were only wanting to play like 13, 14 songs. So we're like, how do we make this um, unique, even for fans that have kind of seen us a million times? You know, um, we haven't played Into Your Arms in a minute. You know, it's been a long time. Um, and so when thinking about how we could kind of approach these old songs in new ways, um, Pat brought up Sydney and to be honest, we didn't, she got there. We hadn't practiced at all before. Um, so it's kind of a testament to her, her, her talent. And we get there. Well, we had been, we had already done however many songs she gets there and we're like, all right, we ready. <laughs> it's like, yep, let's do it. So we, before the stream, we only practiced it. We ran through the song twice. And then wow. it was like, all right, now you're going to have 19 cameras, you know, sorry, Sydney, like, here you go. Here's, <laughs> here's the thing. Hopefully we do it right. So, but you know, what's cool is my dad actually texted me and was like, wow, that was really cool. Who was that Sydney girl? It was oh, like, wow. Yeah, so so it was really rad, and then the response that we saw online, and, and and you know, it was really really rad to to kind of reimagine that song, you yeah, know, is, is something that some that's been around for fourteen years. So, is that something you see yourself doing a bit more of? I know you guys like to play, whether it's you know doing full album live streams or you know things that you know your festival and stuff, playing around with some of the old stuff. Do you see yourself wanting to do more of that kind of putting a new twist on some of the old songs in a live setting? I mean, this definitely opens the door to not completely dismantle the song. You know, like the, the, the way that we played Into Your Arms is the way that the song was recorded. And that, uh, to me, after going through sort of a few years of like, uh, well, if we play everything I asked for, we got to play it different than we recorded it, you know, because I don't like the way that sounds now. But it's like there is a, a, a reason why people dig it you know and i think you know we'll still certainly have our like artiste moments where we have to like fulfill that whatever need to like change something radically but i think for me the 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 idea that like all we did was have somebody really talented come in and like steal the show it's like well we could just we could just kind of you know run with that idea so i think well, definitely th that thought right there just just definitely inspired some s some new ideas for like ways to reimagine old songs without having to, like I said, just dismantle what people loved about them in the first place. So, yeah, nice thought to have, really, for sure. Um, let's talk a little bit. I guess we start to wrap up like, about this new era. You know, last time we spoke, it was about wrapping up You Are OK. As we head into this new era now, we kind of know a bit more about what it's going to be. We know a bit more about how it's going to look, how it's going to feel. What are the aims for you guys, man? Let's pretend the world is normal again. What are the aims? What are the things you guys want to achieve this time round again? Oh, man. Um yeah, that's a good question. I, I don't think we've really had time to, to think too much about um, to think too much about goals. You know, obviously, if the world was was the way it was a, a year and a half ago, that might be different. You know, we would have been looking forward to being on main stage at Renegade and Leeds and, you know, doing things like those. But I think we're so excited just about the record 
and it feels so I don't want I, I'm not comparing it to American candy at all um, sonically but I, I feel like at least for our bands um, I have the same feeling I did right before we put out American candy where it was like sort of this this excuse me this like not a lull but it was like I, I guess you could consider 2020 a lull you know and it feels very dark and and heavy and I feel like Forever Halloween did that for our band it was like a dark heavy brooding kind of record and then American Candy came and it was like this breath of fresh air for our band just as a dynamic it was like we needed to breathe new life into our band and I think that that is hopefully what XOXO will do is is sort of take our spirits out of this brooding heaviness and and kind of bring life back to the main and and, and hopefully it feels completely different because that's what I think we're going for is just something to feel fresh for our our band you know yeah we can feel it already man with that single i mean it's 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 so quintessentially you guys but clearly a, a step in a slightly different direction from you are okay and in a positive way as much as our life both eras man it's it's really nice to see you guys always wanting to try new things looking forward to the rest of the record and uh yeah in the meantime man just stay safe out there we can't wait to see you guys over here in the uk when that is allowed we're hoping sooner rather than later but in the meantime man john just always good to chat to you Kit, take care of yourself all right man hey great to talk to you man sorry for the internet i gotta be i gotta figure it out (laughs) all right john everybody